Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with a big round of applause, Magnus Edholm. Thank you very much, Chris. Great seeing you again. Magnus, check out that applause. The energy here in the room is electrifying. Okay? It is, it is. Electrifying, <laughs> automated. Uh, uh, we're just getting started here. We're just getting started. But tell us more about continuous optimization. What are, what are you going to show us? I'm going to show you a lot of things happening in the industry. And continuous optimization is surely a key word or the two key words of our times. I know you, as a person, you're continuously developing. I've been with True. you on this stage for, I don't know, four years, three years, five years? I think years? you did five. Five years. And yeah. you get, always get better. And I also wish I could do the same. Like the industry is doing. I, I could say the same about you. Oh, you're very nice. You've you got to start with yourself, right? Yes, yeah, true. You true. always need to embrace opportunities to improve, for sure. And but that's what I'm going to talk about for the next 12 minutes and so. Then I guess I won't take more of your time. The stage is yours. Thank I'll you very back. much, Chris. Appreciate that. Also from my side, a warm welcome to Hanover and Siemens booth here in Hall 9. Uh, it's the first presentation of the day, so it is obviously a bit nervous. We've had some things going down the last couple of hours. Visits by Angela Merkel and also Stefan Löfven, the Swedish Prime Minister. And also, I'm very proud since I'm Swedish myself. Uh, I'm going to talk about how continuous optimization works in the industry and what tools and levers digitalization is offering. Uh, because it is actually not enough to become better once. You continuously need to improve the industry. And this, since digitalization as such, is actually a journey without a given end or an end station. So I'm going to go into talking about how indu the industry in general and perhaps the automotive industry in particular um, are, is facing those challenges, or I prefer to say opportunities. I'm sure you've been around the booth and you've seen there's a lot of cool technology almost everywhere. And one of them is additive manufacturing, where you're printing 3D on machines. This is a new technology that's opened up a lot of new things for manufacturing companies around the globe, being able to produce lot size ones. And if you look at the battery production for e-cars, uh, to be able to get those batteries to the manufacturing facilities, that requires the development of new supply chain. And once the battery is in the factory, then you may want to look at the interlogistics, being able to optimize the flow of material to the production line. So there's a lot of going on. And believe me, what I just told you is more or less just the tip of the iceberg. So picture this. You're sitting in a bus. You're hammering down the autobahn, the freeway, the highway, or whatever way you're on. All of a sudden, the bus driver swings out his tablet, starts to plan tonight's dinner. I'd be terrified. I would wish that a MacGyver was on board the bus to take over control. But believe me, this is something that's going to happen in a not too distant future. And if you think about the amount of testing required to enable cars to drive autonomously on today's road, it, it is a ridiculous amount of testing. As a matter of fact, it requires about 14 billion kilometers, which is the equivalent of taking the car from Hanover and swing around the planet Pluto and go back towards Earth and get out of the car around the moon. There you have the distance. And this is where digitalization actually comes to the rescue. Since digitalization is offering a lot, a lot of methods of doing this testing in a digital environment, this obviously saves a lot of driving on normal roads and speeds up the process. So why are you showing this, you may think? Siemens, yeah, this is something we're working very closely with. We're developing software in the field of autonomous driving. It's called TAS. And this is something you can actually look closer at in the center of the booth where our specialists are standing talking about this. So with that, I'm going to leave the streets. And we're going to take a step back into the manufacturing facility of cars. Surely there aren't too many things that are more optimized than the production line for a car production. Clean, slick, effective, bright, fantastic. Very optimized. But what do you do when you need to implement a new drive concept onto this production line that is established? Well, one thing could be to look into intralogistics and working with automated guided vehicles. This is future vision. It's basically having a car being built 
the car parts are put on an AGV, automated guided vehicle, and they navigate their way through the facility to the stations where they can get this particular component required to become the, par the car or the product that the customer has ordered. Basically, navigating collision freely. This is something we can support already today by using Technomatics plant simulation, for example, where you are optimizing the flow of material, working with AGVs, making sure that they find the best and the most effective way to navigate through the facility. That's software. And believe it or not, this is also something that works today, as you see in this video. Those AGVs are obviously equipped with Siemens components, controllers, sensors, actors, etc. And it's an open interface. And those are also continuously optimizing the way those cars are moving around the factory, making sure they take the shortest and the most effective route through the whole facility. So if I would summarize what benefits simulation and flexible production concept has, it's uh, obviously the fact that you can actually validate your manufacturing flow in a virtual environment long before you actually go live with it. It means that you can have a more economic manufacturing process, optimized flow of information, and uh, of course also the supply chains. And a scalability, because surely the market is changing. Sometimes the requirements go up, there's more demand, and you can meet those changes and swings in the market. With this, uh, we're going to move away from the automotive industry and go into the machinery industry. There's a company in Austria called Rosendahl. They've been working for about 30 years building machines for battery production and casting lead poles on classic batteries. They thought they had optimized this process to what, what was, feasible, was possible all the way through the end until they opened up and uh, embraced digitalization, I would say. So they started working with uh, Siemens solutions for machine building, which is called Mechatronics Concept Designer, which is basically a platform allowing mechanical engineers, automation engineers, and software specialists, electronic guys, to work together to develop concepts for machines in a virtual environment, testing different concepts. And, uh, that also in combination with the TIA portal and PLC Sim Advance, which is a virtual controller more or less, and an uh, automation design system. They were able to find completely new ways of producing those very advanced machines. So instead of saying, I'm not going to change the winning team, or we've always done it like this and it's always working. This is something they stepped aside and they tried a new different way. And the proof is that it used to take about 18 to almost 24 months to develop a machine. Thanks to digitalization and working with those solutions, software and automation, they actually kicked it down to 12 months, which is clearly fantastic. So digitalization has an astounding effect on this, basically cutting time in half when it comes to developing new machine concepts. They also increased the machine efficiency rate when the machine was in work use. So they had an efficiency rate of 95%, and with that also a lot higher throughput of the machine itself. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is continuous optimization. Once more, I'm going to step over to a new business, which is very, very cool. It's additive manufacturing, basically printing steel or any other component material. This opens up for a complete new business. You're able to design whatever you like, and you can be sure that you can produce it down to lot size ones. And once this technology gets industrialized, we're going to see a complete game changer. However, in this process, there are still a lot of manual work going on. Because you can think that when you're building those parts up in your computer, there's a lot of material, sand, dust being left over. And until now, this had to be removed manually. Someone stood there with a vacuum cleaner and a brush, making sure they swept all this stuff away. This is potentially harmful for the person doing it. It's not good for the environment. So, and you think, well, why don't you just lift it and turn it around and just get rid of the sand or the material? If you have a construction like that, it's very complex. It's a burner head, by the way, the one to the right side. It would be like when you were a child and you stood there with your piggy bank trying to shake those coins out of that thing. Surely you could shake that device also and hope that you get everything out. But hope is not a strategy. So what we did, we actually developed an algorithm together with a company called Solocon, one of our partners. 
an algorithm for depowdering this type of complex parts. And this has been proven very successful. As you can see here on this machine, uh, obviously equipped with Siemens automation components. And this complex device is standing on a plate that's vibrating. And based on the algorithms behind, it knows how to turn. And I think it's kind of hypnotic. You look at it, you see the sand pouring out. I could look at it for hours, but I don't have hours to spend here on stage, unfortunately. Right, Chris? No. So this is also, to me, continuous optimizing, taking a challenge and doing something out of it. And that I totally like. So automated depowdering means that you have no harm for the human workers. You can easily reuse the metallic powder that's been used. And of course, with that, a less environmental impact. So this is all about continuous optimization. And um, surely you think, what makes all this possible? And I would tell you, it is about embracing digitalization. And we at Siemens, we do it along the five steps of a value chain. We take on a holistic approach, basically making sure that data or innovation gets born in step number one. And this information grows and it flows all the way from the beginning to the end. You have a collaboration platform beneath, making sure that data is flowing to the persons involved in this process. So they get data access at the given moment in time in order to make that very particular important decision to do the best of the product. Because Siemens, we've been working with this vision very long to merge the virtual world with the real world, being able to design something in the digital world, test it and build it in an optimized way, learn from that, and feed those insights back into the development process. And we're working on a concept which includes the digital twin of the product, the digital twin of the production, and digital twin of performance. Collecting data, turn that data into information or intelligence, and feed it back into the product development and production development, and continuously optimize. So where do I start? People often ask me. Well, we clearly got the portfolio. But you know what? We also have the consulting crew. We got the implementation specialist. And we can clearly continuously optimize any given installation. So with that, continuous optimization, I think I've proven to you that we are thinking industry further. And it would be my pleasure to start your digital journey together with us here at Siemens. Thank you very much. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.